to Markets Today. I am your host, Mbithe Mwema. Today, we are taking a deep dive and having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with the CEO of Centre, Dr. James Moria. Dr. James Moria has been in this firm since 2008, and I actually recall interviewing him then when I was an analyst. Now I have come to Two Rivers, their latest development, and I'm very excited to hear how they have actually moved from a very small company to a really large company only in 11 years. Dr. Moria, welcome to the show. Thank you, ma'am. How are you this afternoon? Very well, thank you. All right. Give us an overview. What is Centum? When we're looking at Centum, what should we be looking out for? Thank you very much. Centum is a, is a listed investment company, and we have four verticals of, of business. One is our private equity portfolio. Uh, that's about a 30 billion shilling business in terms of asset size. And it has a range of, of, of assets, uh, investments that we've made, uh, investments like uh, Isuzu Motors, NAS, uh, Longhorn, uh, the bottlers that are in the process of uh, exiting. Within that particular uh, pillar, we're also working on raising a private equity a private equity fund. Okay. The second pillar is our real estate business, similar sized to the private equity uh, business line, about another 30 billion. Okay. And within that, you have uh, Two Rivers, which is where we are today. You have uh, Palmarina in Uganda, you have Ipingo Development, and we have a number of that party projects that are coming on, uh, on stream. Okay. Then we have a marketable securities business portfolio, which is managed by our subsidiary, Nabo Capital. All right. And that invests in listed equities and fixed income securities across, across the continent. And the fourth pillar is our development portfolio. And within that, we have a really greenfield infrastructural projects. So we have a power project in there. We have an agricultural development project within that. Okay. So that's that sort of, in, in simple terms, that, that is in terms. So in aggregate, the total asset size is about uh, 70 billion uh, shillings. Okay. And the book value of shareholder funds is just slightly over 50 billion shillings. Over 50 billion. Yeah. How has this grown since you joined up until now? What was it at when yeah, you actually when joined? I, when I took over as a CEO of the company in uh, December of 2008, total assets were about uh, 6 billion. Okay. Uh, I still remember cash on hand was about 10 million. Wow. The overdraft was uh, 180 million shillings. Okay. So we moved from uh, six, grown about 11, 12 times wow. uh, to what it is today. And we've also got into new sectors. The business, the composition of that was largely about 70% was marketable securities. And um, the balance was largely uh, uh, private equity. Okay. So the development portfolio and the real estate portfolio that we've created over the last uh, 11 years. Okay, that's very, very interesting. So how is it that you actually grew 10 to 11 times in 11 years? So what was your focus? What made you actually different yeah. from other companies? So we've had, um, it's been a 10 year period All and right. uh, we had the first strategy period, which was uh, Centum uh, 2.0. Okay. And within that period, our objective was to grow from uh, 6 billion to about 23 billion. And by the end of that period, we were closer. And was this net asset value or? This, this was uh, total assets. Total assets. This okay. was total assets. So we moved from, we, we managed to grow from the 6 to about 30 within that, that period. Okay. And in that first period, we made a decision to, two, two important decisions, I think. One was to, to diversify away from the market. Uh, and, 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 and offer investors access to otherwise inaccessible investment opportunities. Because the thinking then was that it didn't make sense to be a listed investment company and where the majority of the portfolio are also other listed securities. Okay. Because investors could on their own access those securities. So we're not adding much, much value. So we made a decision to focus more on uh, illiquid assets and, and grow our private equity portfolio and grow our 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 real estate portfolio as well. Which fed into now 3.0, Santa 3.0. fed into, 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 into 3.0. Okay. 3.0, we, we narrowed down the focus a lot more. So we, we then identified seven sectors that we we're going to, to focus on. And also we made a decision to start doing more development uh, work. And all this was largely funded through, it's been funded through internally generated funds. We've not raised a single shilling of uh, new equity capital over the last uh, 11 years. Wow. Uh, and the first sort of seven or six was funded through a zero dividend payout policy. Okay. So what we we'll do is that we we'll reinvest internally generated funds, invest, create value, exit, and recycle back the capital into other into other projects, and and also and also debt. Now the phase we are going into is Centum 4.0, is a deleveraging phase. So we want to pay down the entire debt. We have about uh, 15 
depends on the time. Between that, I think long-term debt is uh, is a bond we issued in 2015. It's maturing next year, which is about six billion, okay. and uh, some USD denominated debt of about seven billion. So total long-term debt is about 13 billion shillings, okay. and our intention is to pay it down in its entirety, because what we now want to do is to close the gap, the price to NAV gap. So today we have an NAV per share, which is about 70 shillings, and the price is half of that uh, of that NAV. So we are trading at a price to NAV of 50, about 50%. Uh, 50%. percent. So the way to close that, that gap, okay. uh, we figure out is that we need to enhance the dividend payout and possibly also buy, have a share buyback scheme. Okay. Fair and enough. so that's what we're working towards. That's what, you've, yeah. you've preempted like, the, yeah. my next three questions. Yeah. But let me, let me come back to your yeah. debt element and yeah. uh, what's actually due next year, six billion. So yeah. how do you plan on paying for this? Do you have internal funds that so, can meet this? Yeah, so our typical model, as I've explained, is an organic model okay. where you invest, create value, exit, so borrow, put in the money, deploy the capital into, into investment opportunities, have those opportunities grow, realize that exit and pay down the borrowed funds. Okay. So we've had a number of exits and part of the use of proceeds of those exits, uh, exits that we've announced and other exits that are in the pipeline and part of the use of proceeds of those exits is to, part of it is to pay down the, the debts that are, that are maturing. We don't intend to roll over. Okay. So essentially we'll have a very strong balance sheet because we'll have a balance sheet of about uh, 60 to 70 billion with no debt. With no debt. Uh, having started off with 6 billion. So I think it's not, it's not a bad run, having started off with six billion, ending up with about 60, let's say call it 60 to 70, that's, that's a very good uh, debt free. Yes. I think that, that that's a reasonable uh, performance. Okay, so if I'm looking at your debt, are you going to clear the entire 13 billion in this yeah. financial year? So, so because the, the debt matures at different points. This right. this year we are going to clear, we're going to clear the, the USD denominated portion, All right. which is about seven billion. Okay. And the bond falls due in mid next year. All right. So we need to wait for it to fall due. Okay. And then we don't intend to we don't intend to roll it over. Okay. Yeah. So that's in your 2021 fiscal uh, calendar yes. yeah. for your for your earnings yeah. reporting yeah. Yeah. cycle. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Very interesting. Does that mean that uh, you continue paying 1.2 shillings or is there an upside to this yeah. dividend payout? You see, you see what constraints dividend is is you pay dividend out of cash earnings. Yes. And and when you get your gross cash earnings a big portion of our cash earnings has been going into interest service. Okay. And uh, today we, we are spending about 1.8 billion shillings on, on, on interest. We have about 600 million shares outstanding. So we are spending about three shillings per share on interest. Okay. So when you pay down the debt, it means that in subsequent years, you're not spending that three shillings per share okay. on interest. That sounds very juicy. From 1.2, yeah. you're yeah. sort of creating but an I'm not upside. Saying, I'm not, I'm not saying, actually, you're not saying it's I'm the three, but we're going this, to take it all, but it, it leaves you some room. It, it leaves you a lot of wiggle room, and okay. with that free cash flow, then you have an opportunity to say, do I then implement a, a structured share buyback program? All right. Uh, because ideally, the, the investment has to work for its owners. That's true. And, and its owners can only realize value by the price per share going up. Okay. So if you get a share buyback and buy the, the overhang of shares... What's uh, the overhang in your view? I think the overhang is about... It's not much. It's about 200 million shares. 200 million. At okay. the current uh, 35 shillings, that's about 7 billion shillings. Okay. So even if you have a program over three years, you can clear the overhang. Okay. And, and then be left with really long-term shareholders All right. who've bought into the business, who understand the company. All right. And possibly then you can now close the gap. Okay, I know you have been sent them, and I, I think a bit of uh, we've also had from Safaricom championing mm. the discussion. Mm. Are the regulations out, or how is that So, in my, in my last engagement with the uh, with the regulator, because we've engaged with the regulator on this, the, the position of the regulator is that they're going to look at it on a case by case basis. Okay. So we need to develop our our program and the rationale of the program, and then they will they would approve it. Okay. Yeah. Would I be uh, correct in saying maybe this is sort of a medium term, largely because of the regulatory aspect, maybe two to three year plan. So it would be something we want to do within the Centum 4.0. Okay. Yeah, uh, and, and I think the, the Companies Act supports it and uh, the regulator is open to it because ultimately what you want is uh, to have a market where investors realize the return on their investment. That's very true. So to the extent that you're working towards that, there's no reason why it should not be supported. That's true. And you really need uh, investors who are aligned to the kind yes. of work that yeah. you're doing. Who are aligned to the, exactly. uh, to the mission of the, of, of the business.
business. Okay, so maybe I need to be looking out for the shares before you pull them out of the market. Yes, if you're aligned to a mission. <laughs> if I'm aligned to, you align to the mission. Then, yes, uh, yeah. if I'm aligned to the mission. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. so just hold on to the element of just addressing the, the value um, overhang in the market. So yeah. we, we shall discuss that. But I wanted to just uh, delve into your Centum 4.0 strategy. Yeah. So yeah. you have come from an element of capital appreciation. Yes. What's yes. the next focus now? What our objective was from a uh, 2.0. Okay. One of our strategic pillars was to scale up the business. Uh, we realized it was a small business, and our view is that if we did not scale up and and increase the size, would end up having to make investments in significantly smaller entities. So we'd move from being a tier one kind of investor to progressively going to tier two, tier three investments. Okay. Largely because we realized that as the economy grows, the profitability of businesses would would enhance, and so would their valuations. So for us, we had an important imperative to scale up. And I believe we've achieved that yeah, with where we are now. What has been the greatest achievement? Because you said on, under the Centum 3.0, you had four pillars. And at least the news that has come out into the public realm, it feels like the private equity pillar was the most successful. If I look at the performance of the four, private equity over the last 10 years has delivered an IRR of about... 28 percent, 29. That's a good IRR. Which is a very decent IRR. That's a very good internal rate of return. It's a top sort of one of the top sort of the top one two percent. Yes. In sub-Saharan Africa, among. Oh wow, yeah. that's excellent. Well yeah, done on that. Well. If you also look at our real estate business, okay. The IRR is above 30 percent. Oh, interesting. Yeah, okay. because you know we started from scratch. Okay. And we built it up, and. Um, so what's the value up? Is the, it value addition and, into? And the underlying. Uh, the underlying investments are largely debt free. Okay. So you have a very, you know, if you look at Palmarina, it's debt free. If you look at Pipingo, it's debt free, and they're all selling very well. Two Rivers, we have other partners here as well. So we built a sizable business okay. from from really nothing right. in a, in a period of ten years. That has also done very well. So actually, when you look at the real estate, it's very clear what's happening in Two Rivers. So you you had land and then you have developed it. Mm. What are the updates when you're looking at uh, Vipingo and Palmarina? So again, very similar. Uh, in Vipingo, we acquired the land. We rezoned it from agricultural to mixed use. Has, then, is that now complete? Uh, that, that was completed a few years ago. Okay. We then uh, started the development process. Our development process is market-led. So we released uh, three, so we had three uses that we've released to the market, a residential use, a commercial and industrial. We've had our first sales of industrial user. Uh, we have a, a, major, a major industry that is acquired a site, the 20 acre site to set up the factory. We've also sold the site for the residential user. So okay. there's an investor who's coming up, setting up a mall. Um, under, under petrol station, okay. there's an investor coming up on a hospitality end. Are you happy with the progress yeah, or has it been what slow? What has been very successful is the residential okay. side. Okay. Uh, so far, we've, uh, we began sales a year ago. Mm -hmm. So far, we've sold about 400 units. Okay. Wow. And there are about, I think, 600 units under construction. All right. So that has progressed very well. Palmarina, again, very similar. That is largely, the anchor there is largely uh, residential. But it's actually been one of our most successful uh, projects. I, wow. I think they also at about 400 units so far uh, of sales to date. Okay. And there's a lot, so the construction is, is coming up. So then you've de-risked it because you are developing what the market uh, wants. Okay. And the number of other users that are in the pipeline are hospitality, user, uh, healthcare, and with the time as you build the population, then you can bring on board commercial yeah. and, and retail. Okay, very exciting. That's yeah. the most positive news I've had on real yeah. estate, yeah. at least yeah. this week. Yeah. But uh, Dr. Moria, let's take a quick break. Okay. We shall be back.